Good evening. Welcome to North American Martyrs. Please stand for our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water. He has created which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Receive the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Now let us join together in singing the Gloria. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, in abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. 
They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed solemnity of all the saints to you all. Uh, this is one of my favorite feasts in the church. Um, it's uh, celebrated with great solemnity over not just uh, this evening, but also uh, throughout uh, tomorrow, and then we'll have All Souls Day. Um, and then when I was in the seminary, we had our patronal feasts of St. Charles Borinit Mayo for our seminary. Um, and so we would actually be celebrating 40 hours of adoration, exposition, um, and celebration. Uh, during that time, ending with the Feast of St. Charles, where we would have a solemn Mass uh, with the bishop. And so it's a beautiful time. It has a lot of wonderful memories uh, for me, not just from the seminary, but growing up as well and learning about the saints, um, as well as some of our, my family's fun traditions. And we got to live out one of those this afternoon as well, uh, where Father Connor, myself, Father Walmeyer, we all uh, decided to carve some pumpkins that we had sitting out front, so we uh, went into it with a lot of uh, robust, uh, like a lot of a lot of energy. And as we were working on these, um, you know, getting together these images that we had in our mind, um, you know, the thought that came to mind to me was, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. In this case, a pumpkin's worth a thousand words. So I hope you'll be able to see them. Um, as you head out, um, we worked nice and diligently, and Father Connor uh, was making fun of me. He said, oh, you're taking so long. You should, you should have been done like an hour ago. It's like, well, you got done 30 minutes. I don't know about you, but I like working on my pumpkin. But nevertheless, you know, as I was looking at these different images that they had uh, online for all these different pumpkins that people have been working with, um, you know, it seemed like each time they're taking it to another level of... Um, how do I say, devotion of, of carving pumpkins um, to the point that the intricacy uh, became so great that it was obvious that a lot of detail and work went into these and that they had their whole array of tools laid out for what they would be working on. And it's kind of like the same in which uh, we encounter the world that we live in. We see different levels of beauty in the world. You know, beginning with, you know, we see painters who you know, begin, at beginning levels, they try to capture the realism of the world in the same way uh, a person tries to capture nature in their own home by having plants there. Um, and then you go to a conservatory and you can see all the plants in, the, in that place from different places of the world. But nothing compares to the real thing. When you're out in the midst of the world, you know, at the national parks or going out and, and viewing it in all of its glory and beauty, uh, words cannot contain, you know, the wonder that it inspires. I remember, in a particular way, my family taking trips out to the Hyde uh, Observatory uh, here in town and doing stargazing. Um, and as a child, gazing out into the heavens, into the vast regions of space, and just being enamored, you know, at just 
know, how far and yet how close it all is. And how, you know, as a child, you know, I, I couldn't get enough of it. I had to keep diving deeper and deeper and learning about space and learning about uh, the world that we live in and all the beauties of that. And it's something that, uh, you know, I could spend a lifetime going into as I had kind of hoped. But God pointed me on a different direction there. You know, how much, you know, we encounter the same thing when we try to see what is heaven going to be like, trying to describe, you know, the beauty of what heaven will have in store for us. You know, in a manner of speaking, we experience the beauties of this world, but when we try to put into words, when the saints try to put into words what the beauties of heaven will be like, there's uh, a place at which language loses its capacity to be able to fully envision and, and describe what is present there. You know, even our Lord says in Luke's gospel, to what can I compare the kingdom of God? You know, he uses all these different analogies, but it falls short of the reality. You know, the saints become lost for words in speaking of this. Uh, even St. Faustina herself uh, had a moment where she got a glimpse of heaven. And she just describes it in these terms. She says, today I was in heaven, in spirit, and I saw its inconceivable beauties and the happiness that awaits us after death. I saw how all creatures give ceaseless praise and glory to God. I saw how great is happiness in God, which spreads to all creatures, making them happy. And then all the glory and praise which springs from this happiness, returns to its source. Even in the 1300s when Dante was writing his divine comedy, he attempted to put into words the realities of heaven, you know, moving from the inferno, from hell, to purgatory, to heaven, and his spiritual journey through each of these, these places. You know, how can he put it into words and he, he does a, a marvelous job, but even so, he um, you know, still falls short of that reality. He even puts it in, in, some, in these particular ways that, um, you know, using the words of St. Paul, that I hath not seen nor e ear heard, you know, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. You know, he repeatedly finds himself lost for words to communicate the beauty and purity of heaven. He often offers even a disclaimer, uh, which we might paraf paraphrase as objects in poem are larger than they appear. That is, Dante's memories of paradise are only the small-scale reflection of an impossibly grand reality that cannot be mirrored or portrayed by any man. The beauties of creation, both real and imagined, are meant to surpass all efforts at realistic portrayal. Colors and shapes bend in a fantastical heightened reality that seers and prophets for centuries portrayed, sometimes from faith and sometimes from substances. You know, we find himself uh, looking and beholding things that are shadow prefaces, uh, you know, prefaces of it here. But in reality, language finds itself being pushed to its breaking point in trying to communicate these heavenly truths. You know, even in our, the book of Revelation, we see that you know, the presence of um, all those um, in that great multitude being present before our Lord, you know, can't be counted, you know, from every nation, race, people, and tongue, giving praise, glory, and adoration to our God. So this is the, the perfection of heaven that is truly communicated to us, that is of one body, one communion. You know, there's no isolation, no solitude in heaven. You know, we're truly united as one body in Christ before the Blessed Trinity in, in the beatific vision, that is the blessed vision of the Trinity. And yet the realization hits home here that nothing imperfect then can enter heaven. You know, in the, the beauty and the surpassing realization that, you know, anything imperfect, anything in need of perfection can't enter this place yet. You know, sometimes we have this common lukewarmness toward um, the ideas that, you know, I want to be in heaven, but I don't want to put in the efforts in uh, being joined to our Lord in my daily activities. 
you know, almost as if it's something out of uh, a Marvel film where he's just going to snap his fingers and everything's going to be fine. You know, we're just going to, to be there without having um, to engage our Lord in this life. You know, that's not the reality that's pointed to us. And so there's an immediacy and necessity of needing to prepare ourselves now, now for that glory that he has prepared for us through our baptism. You know, we hear the Beatitudes today. And a good question that we should consider is, how have I incorporated the Beatitudes into my life? We're very good about seeing the Ten Commandments and comparing ourselves to those. Okay, what about the Beatitudes, though? You know, those things that truly are, bring happiness, you know, true happiness. Um, how do I approach the Beatitudes? Have I shown mercy and compassion? You know, do we mourn with Christ over those who know him and yet reject him? Do we keep our hearts pure and humble? You know, how have I incorporated these into my life? For in God's mercy and justice, he provides then a means for us to become purified, perfected, and ready to be received into that heavenly court. So even if we find ourselves um, there but not yet ready, you know, our Lord still provides a means for us to uh, come before his presence, and that's through purgatory, uh, which we'll be celebrating on this 2nd of November with All Souls Day and praying for all those who have gone before us, for our family members, friends, um, for those most forgotten, uh, for those closest to heaven. You know, praying for all those souls in purgatory who are in need of our, our intercession, in need of our prayers and merits, for our sacrifices, our fastings, and our prayers have great merit when we join them to the sufferings of Christ. You know, we have great power being joined through our baptism to the entire body of Christ because as a body we join in the sufferings and the joys of every other member there. As a part of Christ's body, then we can offer up our daily works for the poor souls in purgatory. I was reading many different accounts from uh, the poor souls and from the saints who have encountered them, um, and to name them all would take quite a bit of time. Um, but what I highly recommend is um, taking some time after Mass or sometime this week to sign um, on this, uh, this table here. We have um, all, a list of all the souls of those in our parish, family members, friends uh, who have gone before us. Um, in offering them up in prayer, and we'll be celebrating Mass with all of these intentions in mind for these poor souls, um, especially for your loved ones uh, from the faithfully departed. Uh, for this is a beautiful opportunity for us to bring their needs before not only our Lord, but before the greatest prayer that the Church offers, which is the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. I also wanted to offer one other thing. Um, in the back of the church um, on the table, you'll find that we have received a, a letter from the Vatican uh, with regards to how to obtain an indulgence for the poor souls in pur purgatory. And they've really um, made it very easy to obtain in indulgences at this time, especially praying for uh, those who have died, um, whether by visiting a cemetery or by uh, praying for them at home. Um, so I really recommend taking one of those with you, uh, for it, it provides a beautiful way of calling to mind and, and uh, bringing to mind all of those needs of the souls in purgatory. So as we come to our Eucharistic Lord, the one Lord that we are all united to, you know, both here on earth, in purgatory, and in heaven, may we call to mind that he is one who desires to unite us all in himself to that glory in heaven. And lastly, to remember that there is only one real sadness in life. Of all the things we can experience, there's only real, really one sadness, and that's not to be a saint. Let us stand now and offer all of our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. That through devotions to the saints, the union of the whole church in the spirit may be strengthened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the virtue, integrity, and courage of the saints will take hold of the minds and hearts of all those who govern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will strengthen the bonds of faith, hope, and love that exist within our parish community through the meditation of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Inspire generous hearts and the young people of our parish family to hear your call to the priesthood or the religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may take time each day to rest in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the soul of Richard Dostal, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the needs of all here present, for which we now pause to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints united in one body in Christ, we bring to you all of our prayers and petitions this evening, and we ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints, to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today by your gift we will celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already give you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the Church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damians, and all your saints. 
we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death for the Lord until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which on the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Please join in prayer at this time to Our Lady of Guadalupe for an end to this pandemic. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us, as you did in the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church another, and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassion. Help for the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace, so that, coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland, through Christ our Lord. Amen. All parishioners are invited to a town hall meeting on Monday, November 2nd at 7 p.m. Attend the meeting in person in the parish hall or see it live on Martyr's Facebook page. 
Main topics for the town hall meeting will include the financial condition of our parish, our response to COVID, and an update on current events. There will also be a Q&A session to provide an opportunity for you to ask questions and gather your feedback. Please join us. Also, please consider coming to our All Souls Day Mass. I believe it's at 11 o'clock on Monday. Um, we also have, of course, our normal Masses on those days at 6.40 and 8 o'clock. Please consider coming to one of those Masses and making an offering of that uh, for the poor souls in purgatory. If you're not able to, um, to do it uh, from your homes um, or in some special way to make a sacrifice uh, for the souls in purgatory that day. Um, also, if you have a little extra time, feel free again to stop by the rectory to see Father Connor and Father Wal Walmeyer and myself. Um, I'm sure you're excited to see what their costumes might be. <laughs> the Lord be with you. With your Bow your heads for God's blessing. May God, the glory, sorry, may God, the glory and joy of all the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Amen. Freed through their intercession from present ills, and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. So that together with all, you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that our children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks.